Welcome to this uh, program uh, with the title uh, The Seventh Day Adventist Church and Women's Ordination. And we will, as usual, we will have a prayer before we start. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that you have given us your guidelines in your Bible. Uh, also about this, about this topic, about the uh, women's ordination, and we pray that you must help us so we can understand uh, uh, what you want us to do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, this topic is uh, uh, a topic that we uh, many churches they deal with this topic and um, it is a great debate uh, in many churches about women's ordination and this is also within the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We have this first text here to ordain women as leaders in the church is not a new situation. Already in many countries the Seventh-day Adventist Church for many years has educated women as pastors and ordained women as pastors in the church. For example, in Norway, Sweden, Denmark, England, Germany, Holland, the United States of America, and many other countries. So the Seventh-day Adventist colleges has prepared for this change for a long time. The women's movement is an attack on the family. The women leave the home and put the children in the in their garden. As pastors, they think that they shall convert others, but many leaders do not take care of their own children. Thus many children are going out into the world. In Titus uh, chapter 2 verse 5 we read, that the older women shall learn the young women to be homemakers, good, obedient to their own husband, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. And it is not so many women that is homemakers today. Many wives and women, they leave their house and, uh, and going out in, on jobs outside the home and as we have seen they also put their children in kindergarten and this is not a good uh, situation over all church they 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 use this um, example they follow the world in this way the women's ministry movement wants to have the same rights as the men. They want to be like the men and have the right to be pastors and leaders in the church. They are influenced by the world because it is like this in the world. They want to be acknowledged by the world. They want to be acknowledged by the church. And then to understand more about this topic, we will start with uh, what happened in the Garden of Eden. Then we read from Genesis 3, chapter 2 and 3. You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. It was God that said this to Eve, Adam and Eve, that they not shall take uh, the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden. And if they did so, uh, they would die. So this was a test of loyalty. The tree of knowledge had been made a test of their obedience and their love to God. Of course, it was the devil that, uh, that came and uh, he said, You will not surely die. So the devil he said something contrary to what God had said. Because God had said, if you eat of the fruit, you will die. 
But the devil said, no, you will not surely die. And then the devil continued, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And this, you know, this had an influence on Eve. She wanted to come out up, up on a higher level. She wanted that her eyes could be opened, so she could be like God to know good and evil. Eve wanted to know more, to attain to a more exalted sphere of existence and enter a broader field of knowledge, but that was a great deception. Eve wanted to come on a higher level. With other words, Satan told Eve that it was an advantage to break the law of God. Eve started to disbelieve the word of God. And this was what led to her fall. It is always disastrous to disobey God. And like restless modern Eve's, she was flattered with the hope of entering a higher sphere than which God has assigned her. In attempting to rise above her original position, she fell far below. This is a warning to the Eve daughters today. Because today the women want to come on a higher level. The devil is tempted them to fall like Eve. And many women want to be like the men to have the same rights as the men. And in this connection, we are reminded of what happened in heaven. When the devil wanted to be like God. We read this in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 13 and 14. And the devil, he wanted to be like God. And we read, I will be like the Most High. It is in a way quite similar to the situation with the women because they want to be like the men to come on a higher position and be like men. And then we go back to Eden. The fruit was very beautiful and she touched it and took the fruit. The fruit was grateful to taste. And now Eve hoped to enter upon a higher state of existence. And the women today that already have been ordained as pastors and leaders in the church has in a way already taken the forbidden fruit, the ordination fruit, and tasted it. Now they will give it to others, both men and women just as Eve gave the fruit to her husband. Adam understood that Eve had taken a wrong decision, but he resolved to share her faith. Shall we be like Adam and also take the forbidden fruit as the women will offer us? Or shall we be obedient to God and follow his standard? Eve had been the first in transgression and she had fallen into temptation by separating from her companion contrary to the divine direction. It was by her solicitation that Adam sinned and she was now placed in subjection to her husband. And I think that we shall note this because this is the in the book from the book Patriarchs and Prophets by Ellen G. White. And she clear in this statement say that no, she was placed in subjection to her husband. And we know also from the Bible that the consequence of this that the Eve took of the uh, that Eve sinned and took of the fruit. 
we read that your desire shall be to your husband. It was God that said this to Eve. Your desire shall be to your husband and he shall rule over you. So here we see the same consequence as we read from Ellen White that she was now placed in subjection to her husband. And then because of this sin, the people were lost because God had said, you will surely die. So they started to, to die. And then, you know, the plan of salvation came forth. And we read in the Bible, God said, I will put enmity between you and the women, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. So, it is always, God will always uh, forgive us when we come to him and confess our sins. And God also forgave Adam and Eve because they confessed their sins. But the consequences were great. And therefore, we must always remember there this, that Christ can forgive us, but the consequences can be great. And the consequences was great also when we see this story about Abel and Cain, his brother Cain. Because God has said that they should offer a faultless lamb when they have sinned, and this faultless lamb should point to Christ that should come as the faultless lamb. And Abel, he was loyal. He offered this kind of lamb. Uh, and, but Cain, he said, no, it's not so, uh, it's not so important. I think I will make it in my own way. So he took some grains from the field and some corn and potatoes and apples and like this you know and put on this altar and then we see that God he fired the offer of Abel so it burned and and Cain he he was um, jealous of uh, Abel so he you know, we read that he took and killed his brother. And the consequences of this was also great. So it is important. When God has said that, uh, that uh, because uh, that Eve sinned, uh, her husband Adam, the man, should rule over her. And then it is important for us also to follow this. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, in the, this is in the New Testament, Paul is writing, A bishop shall be, in the, shall be the husband of one wife, one who rules well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? So the conclusion of this will be, the man shall be the spiritual leader in the home, and if he has loyal children in the Lord, and rule his house well, then he can be a spiritual leader in the church. This is one of the requirements in order to be a leader in the church. And in the first Timothy chapter 2, we also read, for Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman, being deceived, fell into transgression. Because Eve was disobedient to God and sinned first when she took of the forbidden fruit, then, as a result of this, she should subordinate her husband. We have seen this both in the Old Testament and also in the New Testament, that the wife shall subordinate to her husband. She shall be loyal to her husband and the husband shall rule over her. In Genesis 3.16 we read to the women God said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. 
In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be to your husband and he shall rule over you. So that was the consequence of the failure of Eve. And God has given this, this is an example for all the generations that have lived from Adam and Eve to today. That because God in the beginning, he wanted to show that if we not are loyal to God, that has great consequences. And in Ephesians chapter 5, Paul is writing, Wives, submit to your own husband as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. So here we have the right balance that the husbands they shall love their wives and the wives they shall submit to their husband. They shall be loyal to them in everything we read. And then we have the example of Miriam that was a sister of Moses and Aaron that was a brother of Moses. And then they should they should then um, choose 70 leaders because it was too much work for Moses to deal with all the problems. So his, um, his father-in-law, Yetro, said that you have, to, you have to, to give the responsibility to uh, other men. Uh, and, and then this was men that should, that should deal with the problems. It was not women that should be leaders to this. And uh, Miriam, he thought that, oh, she was so jealous. jealous. Uh, and we read uh, from, uh, from uh, uh, this Patriarch and Prophets, uh, page 192 and 193. But Miriam and Aaron, blinded by jealousy and ambition, lost sight of this. Aaron had been highly honored by God in the appointment of the sacred office of the priesthood, yet even this now added to the desire of self-exaltation. And they said, Has the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? Regarding themselves equal, favored by God, they felt that they were entitled to the same position and authority. So they thought that they were equal with Moses. So they should be have the same authority. They should be a part of the team that should appoint the 70 elders, the 70 men. But because of this, you know, uh, Miriam got leprosy. So that was the consequence because they were, they were not loyal to what God has appointed. And this must be something, this is something to say to the, to the ladies today that wanted to be <coughs> equal with the men. As we, when we are talking about priesthood. <coughs> so we read here that uh, Miriam got leprosy. Yielding to the spirit of dissatisfaction, Miriam found cause of complaint in events that God has especially overruled. That must be something to think about for the, for the ladies today that want to have higher position. God had chosen Moses and had put his spirit upon him. And Miriam and Aaron, by their murmuring, were quilty. Of disloyalty not only to their appointed leader but to God himself and when we are talking about women's ordination we have some important questions the first one 
If the church denies a woman to be ordained as the leader in the church, is that to discriminate her? We know that the Seventh-day Adventist Church, they accept this uh, non-discrimination laws. And therefore, you know, we have to give these questions. Because if we accept these non-discrimination laws, uh, when we're talking about uh, women's ordination, then we, we, they, then we will have problems with uh, when we compare this with the word of God, because the order that God placed inside the home is the order that He expects to remain in the church, because the church is an extension of the home. So now the husband shall be the leader in the church and the woman shall subordinate to him and be loyal to him. But then this shall also be like this in the church. Both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament we find that it was only men that were ordained as pastors and leaders in the church. Christ called 12 men as his apostles and Christ called 70 men as leaders. Well, and in the days of Pentecost the 120 persons choose Matthias instead of Judas Iscariot even though it were faithful women there when they took this election. Nowhere in the Old and New Testament we find that a woman was ordained as a leader in the church. So why shall they do it now? The General Conference in session has two times said no to ordination of women as pastors in the church. Then the consequence of this should be that all the women that have been ordained as elders or pastors should resign from their office and we will ask why has this not been done i think that if all the women should resign from their position as pastors and leaders in the church then it would be an uproar a shaking a split but you see the Seventh-day Adventists have, have allowed women to educate themselves as pastors for many, many, many years. And therefore they have been ordained as pastors in the church for a long time. And therefore this is a problem. Because if they should follow the guidelines of the General Conference, what they have decided in General Conference in session, then they should not accept that women should be pastors in the church. And if they have followed the Bible, as we have seen, they should not ordain women as leaders in the church. And because we have seen that both in the Old and the New Testament, it was only men that were chosen as pastors and leaders in the church. So then, why after 6,000 years, we shall suddenly change and accept the women as pastors and leaders in the church. The Seventh-day Adventist Church has now existed in about 150 years. So why shall they, they have always said no to, uh, to accept the women as pastors and leaders in the church. So why shall they now after 150 years suddenly accept women? as pastors and leaders in the church. Because this problem has gone on and because women has been ordained as pastors and even leaders in some churches, then this has caused a split in the Seventh-day Adventist church. And in many churches it has been like this that the leaders, by majority votes, they have accepted 
that women can be pastors and leaders in the church. But when Christ was punished, the majority shouted loudly, Give us Barabbas free! Crucify Christ! Was that the right choice? Did the majority fulfill their decision? Yes, they did. But was it accepted by God? And we know that Christ he was faultless. He was, he, they treated him as a robber. But, you know, he was faultless. He had not done any wrong. So it was a wrong decision that they did. But they, they followed the, the vote of the majority. All the people they shouted, crucified him. And let us have Barabbas free. In Exodus chapter 23, we read, you shall not follow a crowd to do evil, nor shall you testify in a dispute so as to turn aside after many to pervert justice. With other words, you shall not follow the majority when they are not in harmony with the Bible. So then, shall the majority votes decide if we shall ordain women or not. In Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20 we read, To the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So it is, we have to follow this principle also today, that if the majority vote is not in harmony with the word of God, we have to follow the word of God. Then we have this question, if the general conference in session in the future would say yes to ordain women as elders and pastors, can we then trust that the general conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the voice of God? Well, I think we always have already have answered this, but this is a question also to, to the division leaders and also to the union leaders. And the majority of what they are doing this. Because if they ordain women as pastors and leaders in the church contrary to, contrary to the guidelines from the Bible, then we know that they are not the voice of God. And this will have consequences. You see, when about half of the leaders in the world say yes to women ordination, and half of them say no, then someone of them must be right and someone must be wrong. Someone is lying or per perhaps they do not really understand uh, the answer of this question. But you know, the Bible is the same. The Bible will not change. In Hebrew 13.8 we read, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So this is the same today. We cannot change after 6,000 years. We cannot change a practice after 150 years. Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Bible is the same. We have to follow the Bible and we have seen that the Bible is very clear. The women shall subordinate to the husband. They shall not be leaders, as we are talking about pastors. When and if the church accept to ordain women and elders in the church, then what will be the next step? That's a we. A very important question. We have spoken a little about the non-discrimination laws and in this connection we have this important question. If the church denies a gay or lesbian to be the leader in the church, is that to discriminate them? 
if you if you ask this question to the world leaders, they say yes. And if we cling to the and accept the, their non-discrimination laws, then we also have to accept this answer. It is therefore so important that we not accept the laws of the world when they are not in harmony with the word of God. If we do that, we will have problems. But in Matthew chapter 19, verse 4, we read, God made them male and female. He did not make them lesbians and gay. And in Leviticus 18, 22, we read, You shall not lay with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. And in Romans chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, we read, For even their, their women exchange the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lust for one another, men with men, committing what is shameful. So then, we have the next question. If the church denies a divorced or remarried man or woman to be leader in the church, is that to discriminate them? In 1 Timothy chapter 3 we read, A leader in the church shall be blameless the husband of one wife, not coerters. So, this text the Bible is saying very clear that it shall be husband of one wife. Matthew chapter 19 verse 9 we read, And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for fornication or sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery and whoever marries her, her who is divorced commits adultery. Women that have divorced from her husband, she shall not have the position as a pastor and a leader in the church. And then we have another important question. If the church denies a man or woman that used rock music, drama, sexy clothing, rings in the nose and ears to be a leader in the church, is that to discriminate them? You will understand that we will, if we accept these discrimination laws, then we will have problems. Because this problem will come now. Because even from the United Nations and from nearly every country, they say that we cannot discriminate gays and lesbians and... and, uh, and yeah, other or kinds of people. And, uh, and uh, therefore we have to to give these questions, so you have to think about the consequences to accept the, the, the non-discrimination laws. And then we also have a question, if the church denies a man or woman to be a leader in the church, if we will keep Sunday and not Saturday as a day of rest, is that to discriminate them? No. So the consequences can be very great. If you accept this non-discrimination laws, then we will be held accountable for discrimination, civil rights, violation and related misconduct if we not accept the non-discrimination laws. But if we have said in the beginning that we will not link to the state, we will just follow the Bible, then this will, will be much easier for us. Because it will come civil laws and say that you have to, you have to follow the non-discrimination laws and the directions. If not, you will be punished. And it is the same about the Sunday as a day of rest. It will come. And then the government will say, you have to follow the civil rights. You have to follow the, govern, the laws of the government. And this is 
the image of the beast, this is church and state that will, that will rule in the last part of this world history. It is therefore it is so important that the church was not linked to the state and accept their standard and their laws if they are against the laws of the Bible. We will not make uproar against the governments, against the leaders in the country. We want to be loyal members of the country, but in religious matters, if the laws of the government are contrary to the laws of the Bible, we have to say as Peter and the Apostle, we will be, we will be loyal to God. That will be the test in the last part of this world history. Ellen White, she said, I saw the nominal church and nominal Adventists like Judas would betray us to the Catholics to obtain the influence to come against the truth. The saints then will be an obscure people, little known to the Catholics, but the churches and nominal Adventists who know of our faith and customs will betray the saints and report disregard uh, and report them to the Catholics as those who disregard the institutions of the people. That is, that they keep the Sabbath and disregard Sunday. That will be the consequence when church and state will work together in the last part of world history. Therefore, it is so important that we are free in the Lord to follow the Bible and the Bible only in religious matters. And in this connection, give this question. When the church accepts the non-discrimination laws, can we then say that we follow the Bible only? No, we cannot say that. The Bible has not accepted that women can be leaders in, and pastors and leaders in the church. And then I think we shall stop here, and uh, uh, I hope that uh, this can, uh, that uh, during this uh, program uh, I have given you some thoughts to think about, and uh, it is so important for us in these days that we, uh, if we shall be a part of God's movement in these last days. It is so important that we follow the Bible and the Bible only. Also in this question about women's ordination. We will close with a prayer. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we have looked a little into this topic about women's ordination. And we are so thankful for the word of God that has given us clear guidelines both in the Old and the New Testament. I pray that you must help us to follow these guidelines. In Jesus' name I pray.